Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Ceramal metal restorations require some additional procedures beyond those of soldering a full gold bridge. We have positioned the Ponic in place with the acrylic clutch that we previously made and put some flux on the joints prior to positioning the Ponic and now we've introduced some ivory wax to position the Ponic and hold it in place. The next procedure will be to fabricate a soldering splint from our Duralay materials. In making the soldering splint, Duralay is picked up by the paintbrush and teased onto the lingual of these castings. Notice how thick the Duralay was when it was teased onto them, keeping away from the margins of the castings and only onto the areas of the retainers. Also, Duralay does not flow onto the lingual retention leg of the ponic, but kept well away from it. Both retainers are covered well with an intimate relationship of the Duralay to the gold. Again, the thickness of the Duralay is the key at this point in the procedure, flowing both sides well before inserting the paper clip. The paper clip now is teased into the Duralay and positioned across the ponic. This adds rigidity and strength to the Duralay so that the solder relations are maintained. More Duralay then is again teased onto the paper clip to lock it on firmly to the retainers. Now that the ponic has been hooked in place, the soldering clutch is gently removed from the labial part, the castings are again verified that they're in place, and Duralay is again picked up and teased over the incisal edges. This aids in locking the ponic to the whole soldering splint. At this point, the Duralay has set, it is checked with the spatula to make sure of final polymerization and in this case it has set, and the castings are teased out of the teeth very gently. If the dyes do come with it, they can then be teased out, again being careful not to dislodge the ponic or retainers. The splint is now ready to be waxed and this is done to protect the porcelain from the investment. So ivory inlay wax is flowed over the labial of the ponic at least to a millimeter thickness over the entire labial surface. Now the lingual must also be protected and notice that no wax is flowed over the metal substructure a uniform one millimeter thickness. The investment is then mixed thoroughly and this is an investment that will not green the porcelain during the soldering technique. It is mixed to a thick consistency and all air bubbles are removed. Investment has been teased in one casting and the other casting is now receiving the, the soldering investment. Notice the runnier state of the investment. The bridge can now be set aside and the remaining soldering investment spatulated into the mold. This is a thick consistency now since it will hold the bridge in the relationship you want to have it soldered in. It is placed completely in the matrix 
and the soldered, the splinted bridge teased down into place. Very light tapping motions will seat the bridge and excess soldering investment needs to cover these margins. These are thin pin ledge castings and will be dis distorted if not covered and protected. Both castings now are being protected and the wax is over the labial part of the porcelain on the ponic. To lock the ponic into place, investment must be flowed onto the lingual retention lug. This is going to have to be teased underneath the, the paper clip and down over that lug. It takes about 25 to 30 minutes to set. Note that the retainer castings are positioned more horizontally than on the plastic models. The margins of the castings have also been covered with the investment to protect them from the heat of the torch during the soldering. On the lingual aspect, the retention lugs on the two retainer castings have been covered with Duralay. However, this has not been extended over the Ponic since this has been covered with investment to support it in position. We have also added a paper clip stiffener to the Duralay splint matrix to give it some sufficient strength to allow us to remove and position the retainers accurately. Now that the wax mold is removed, the investment is trimmed to free the porcelain, and which is now being protected, and any investment is removed off the labial surface. Excess investment around the sides is also trimmed, and the areas for heat to get in for soldering are exposed. At this point, any excess solder investment is removed and cleanliness is of the utmost importance. Not only is it removed from the labial surface, but also from the lingual. Notice the small size of the soldering investment block. At this point, it is ready to go into the oven, ideally a cold oven is the best way. If the oven is at all warm, it can be placed out on the muffled door until warmed up to the oven temperature. This should be no higher than 500 degrees. The investment is left in here until the oven reaches 1100 degrees when it's taken out for soldering. The investment is now preheated to 1100 degrees and we're ready to solder. The acrylic has completely burned off and no traces are evident. A Bunsen burner is heating the investment from below and excess flux can now be added sparingly at the joints. It will turn white and eventually bubble. Both joints are, are thoroughly fluxed, keeping it off the porcelain. Two small strips of solder are added to each joint, one to each joint, and positioned correctly. At this time, the investment is heated with a soldering flame back and forth, keeping it on the investment and off the castings. This, the flux will begin to flow and bubble, keeping the flame moving, the solder will begin to run which will take very little time since you are almost at temperature. The flame is played back and forth and the solder is beginning to run at this point. You can see both joints flowing now. The flame is kept moving constantly, never holding in one spot. Both have flowed. The joint on the left now has not completely sealed and a little more solder is going to be added. 
This is carried in with the hemostat and heated with the torch and it flows into the joint space. At this point, the flames are turned off, removed, and the whole assembly is covered with a beaker and cooled to room temperature. The investment has now cooled to room temperature, and you will notice on the labial aspect that the investment has been moved away so that it is not in contact with the porcelain. This will prevent any discoloration to the porcelain during uh, the soldering procedure. On the lingual aspect, you will notice that the investment has been brought up over the incisal edge on the retainers to protect them also during the soldering process. We can now remove the investment, polish the bridge, and make it ready for seating in the patient's mouth. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.